Welcome to the Archer Library video tutorials. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use Chicago Citation Style. This tutorial will look specifically at using Chicago Citation Style in the music subject area. There are a variety of different styles of citation and paper formatting that are used in academic writing. The style you will use for your paper will depend on your area of study and your professor's recommendations. Citation styles are guides that indicate how the information presented in your paper is to be formatted and how to properly give credit to resources that are referenced in your paper. At the University of Regina and its federated colleges, professors teaching music courses typically ask that you use the Chicago Manual of Style Guide, sometimes known as the CMS Guide. It covers a variety of topics from manuscript preparation, formatting, publication, grammar, and most importantly, documentation of references. This tutorial will focus on one of the two CMS documentation styles, the Notes Bibliography System, or NB style, which is commonly used in literature, history, and arts courses. The other documentation style, the Author Date System, or AD, is nearly identical in content, but slightly different in form, and is preferred in the social sciences. Be sure to confirm with your professor which format should be used in your paper before you get started. In this tutorial, we will focus on the documentation aspect of Chicago Citation Style. Let's start with the basics and define what a citation is and why it is important. A citation is a way you tell your readers that certain material in your work came from another source. For example, if you use information or ideas you found in a book, a journal article, online, etc. It also gives your readers the information necessary to find that source again, including information about the author and the title of the work. Citations also show how much research you've done and indicates that you are not only aware of other research in your area of study, but that you have considered what other writers, researchers, and experts have published to date. Finally, citations help you avoid plagiarism as a signal to the reader and your professor that you have academic integrity as a writer. Now that we know the citation basics, let's get into more details about the specific parts you will need to complete a paper in Chicago Citation Style. In the Notes Bibliography system, you must include a footnote every time you use the source you consulted for your paper. This means that a direct quotation is always to be followed by a footnote. You must also include footnotes when you are paraphrasing something that someone else has written, be it in a print book you got from the library or online. Footnotes always appear at the bottom or the footer of each page and will be indicated with a superscript number. Do not insert footnotes by hand. Instead, use your word processing program to create proper footnotes. If you are using Microsoft Word, click on the References ribbon and then select Insert Footnote. If you are using Pages on a Macintosh, click on the Format ribbon, Font, Baseline, and then Superscript. Chicago Citation Style will also allow you to use the abbreviation IBID, which means in the same place. It is used when the footnote preceding it refers to the same source. Remember to always indicate the page number or page ranges that are being referenced even when the IBID short form is being used. At the end of your paper, you must include a bibliography. It is different from a works cited list, as it includes an alphabetical list of all of the sources you looked at to write your paper, including those you did not end up footnoting. An important point to remember is that the format for bibliographic references is different from the format used for footnote references. Pay close attention to all the details outlined in the next section. The format of your reference will depend on the type of source you are citing. Books, scores, musical recordings, and journals will all have different citation information. Consequently, the final citation will look different for each one. In this section of the tutorial, we will look at how to cite some of the most common material formats. Let's start with citing a book and look at the elements and format needed to complete this citation. Note the differences in format and the added page number for the footnote entry. In the citation, we start by noting the author title of the book written in italics, place of publication, publisher, and the year the book was published. Pay careful attention to the placement of periods, commas, brackets, and italicized text. 
A music score is cited in a very similar way to a book. Here we have the composer name, the title of the piece in italics, the editor, place of publication, publisher, and the year published. If there is a libretto, you will need to note this along with the editor information. Let's look at citing a music recording. If the conductor or performer is the focus of the recording or is more relevant to the discussion than the composer, either one may be listed first. For the date, include the date of the recording, the copyright date or published date included with that recording, or both. If a date cannot be determined from the recording, which is a common problem with some LPs and older media, consult a library catalog or other resource. Citations without a date are generally unacceptable. If no date can be found, use n.d for no date. Here we have the composer name, the title of the recording in italics, performers, conductor or main performer, CD number, year, and format. Let's look at citing a journal article. A journal article includes the author name, the title of the article in quotations, the title of the journal the article is found in, in italics, and the volume number and issue of that journal. Include the month and year of the journal issue, page numbers of the article, and the date that you access the journal article. Also insert a DOI or URL. The DOI is always preferred over the URL if it is available. When citing an electronic journal, a DOI is always preferable to use over a URL. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier and is an alphanumeric string that is used to uniquely identify articles. Because DOIs are still fairly new, not all articles will have one. If an article has been assigned a DOI, you'll find it at the top of the page along with the other citation information. Always use the DOI if an article has been assigned one. Place the DOI where you would normally insert the URL within a citation. Let's look at citing an entry in the Grove Music Online. Grove calls itself a dictionary, but functions like an encyclopedia, yet it features signed articles by experts in their field. The citation format provided here is a hybrid of the journal article style and the signed article encyclopedia style. Here we have the author name, the title of the entry in quotations, where the entry came from, which is Grove Music Online, written in italics, the editor, which will always be Dean Root, who is the editor of all Grove Music entries, the access month, day, and year, and the website URL. This concludes our video tutorial on Chicago Citation Style. This tutorial has provided a brief look at the Chicago Manual of Style for music students. These citation examples will not be a one-size-fit-all. You will come across sources that have multiple authors, or you may only want to cite one chapter of a book. The Chicago Manual of Style guide details how to document all of the variations. The long version, as well as the quick guide of the Chicago Manual of Style, can be found on the University of Regina Library's Music Subject Guide.